is quadratic and absolute value functions, um, and notice we're on page 41, um, you are still going to continue using the graphs that were page 29. Um, they look like these. Um, and we are looking for um, the graphs. Um, so sort the graphs from the combination of increasing, decreasing, or constant. So that was from the last video that we did. So we're taking all of these ones that have a combination of increasing, decreasing, um, or constant and increasing. So we're taking those ones that are increasing and decreasing a combination, and we're going to sort those now into ones that have a minimum and a maximum. And I'm going to, again, the definitions that they have are good. I just um, like to write a definition in our book based on what we've already learned so far. So in, our, in your notebook, ab quadratic and absolute value functions. So an absolute maximum, so just like the word maximum means the highest, is when you have a point on the graph that has a y value greater than any other point. So maximum, you can think about, is the highest point. So you have a highest point. You probably haven't really seen any graphs that make this U, and we'll be talking about that more. But it makes this U-shaped, and it has a maximum point. It can also make a V-shape, um, and it can have a maximum point. This one is absolute minimum, is when you have a point on the graph that has a Y value less than any other point, and it has that lowest point. So this would be a lowest point. Again, that's a U-shaped. You can also have V-shaped. So it's where there's a single point that's lower than all the others. All right, now, your task is to take all of these letters, A, B, C, E, H, J, N, P, Q, and S, and you're going to sort them into either they have a minimum, they have a maximum, they have no minimum and no maximum, and you're going to sort those. You're going to pause the video. Let me see if I can find my one where I said pause. Uh, here it is. Um, so go ahead and stop the video and fill out the table. Um, you can probably hear the thunder behind me. There's a storm coming, and I stayed late at school to record this video. So there is a storm, but it's just thunder. Hopefully I don't lose power. I would probably be really sad. But so sort these, stop the video, sort those, and then I'm going to fill out the table once I've given you a moment to stop. All right, so for absolute minimum, we, you should have C, J, and Q. Because like if you look at Q, notice that has a minimum. C has a minimum. Let me see if I could find where the J is. And J also has a minimum. Okay, now let's look at the maximum. So maximum, you should have B, E, H, and N. So notice H, E has a maximum point, N has a maximum point, and B has a maximum point. So those are the ones that have that highest point that we just talked about in our definition. And then the ones that don't have either are A and P. So if you look at P, notice this is not a single point that's the lowest because it's like that flat line right there, meaning all of these have the same Y value. So there's no single point that's less than all the other points. And then A, both sides have an arrow, so there is no minimum point. All right, so you should have these sorted absolute minimum, absolute maximum, and these. We're going to again use our graphing calculator and we're going to look at which of these match the graphs that we just looked at. So you're going to type in these equations. Again, remember f of x is the same thing as y, so we always use the y equals button. So y equals and you're going to type this equation in exactly how you see it. So you're going to hit the x button squared, so notice your exponent is a 2, so you can hit the squared button, which is diagonal to the 7. You can also hit the caret and then the 2, but this is just a shortcut so that you don't have to um, type everything out. So x squared, hit the plus sign, 8x plus 12. Okay, and you're going to hit graph, and notice what that graph looks like. 
So let's look at all of our graphs. We know for sure it's not A. We know it's not P. That one has a minimum. This one has, or sorry, this one has a maximum. Ours has a minimum though. So all of those that had a maximum, we can throw those out for sure. Um, so we have C, J, or H. Notice where that minimum point is at right here looks a lot like this minimum point right here. So um, this one is graph Q. Okay, let's do the next one. So we have y equals negative 3x squared plus 4, and you're going to hit graph. Oh, notice that one has a maximum point. And notice it says that thing about when x is an integer. So that means it's single data points again. So we are just looking at that graph, and it's when those points have a single data point. So that is graph E. There's that thunder again. So then we're going to do this one. Notice you have to hit that negative. I don't know if I, I didn't say it on the last one, but if you need help with the negative, it's this button right down here next to the enter. So negative, you're going to do 1 half. So 1 divided by 2 x squared plus 2 x. Hit graph. Notice that one has a maximum point. Um, and of the ones that we had that had a maximum point, the only one that looks close is B. So B would be our next one. Sorry, I'm trying to find, there it is. Okay, so this next one, you have negative two. These bars right here, we call them absolute value. I don't know how many of you have seen absolute value, but just a reminder, absolute value of negative two is two. All we care about absolute value is, is how far are you away from zero? So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So that's what those bars mean. So hopefully you have seen that before. If not, that's just a quick crash course. So anytime you see two solid lines that are straight up and down, we use absolute value. So in your y equals, you're going to type the negative 2. Then notice we have the absolute value. There's not a button that says absolute value. So what you're going to have to do is hit this math button right here. So math. You're going to go, so notice these are kind of tabs at the top. You're going to hit the over arrow to get to number. And you're going to hit that ABS stands for absolute value. And notice it puts those bars for you. If you're on this calculator, it's not. I don't think it's going to do negative 2. You're going to hit math, go over to number, and it's just going to say ABS. Um, so. This one has a little bit more formatting. This one you would just do the same exact thing. You would do x plus 2. You have to close the parentheses to tell it that's what you're taking the absolute value of, and then put plus 4. And that's when you're going to hit graph. And notice it makes the V shape. This one, you're just going to do negative 2, x plus 2. Move your cursor out of the bars, and then put your plus 4, and hit graph. So our two options left are either N or H. Um, notice where your maximum point is, is right here. It's not on the origin. So you would put your max, or you would say that this one is letter N, because that's where your maximum point is. Okay, oh no, it's raining really good. I wonder if you can hear that too. All right, let's do our next one. So our next one, again, hit Y equals. You're going to do negative and then do the absolute value because there's those bars again. So hit math, go over to number, absolute value of x, and then hit graph. Okay, and that would be our last one that we had left, which was h. Okay, I'm going to show you in the other graphing calculator just because I know that that can be difficult whenever it's different. So I'm going to do negative down there at the bottom again, hit math, Go over to the number tab, absolute value of x, 
and you have to close the parentheses to show it's just taken the absolute value of that number. Then hit graph. Okay. This next one, we have y equals x squared. So hit y equals, type your x, and then hit the squared button, and then hit graph. And that one, out of these ones that we have, would just be j. Okay. And the last one is absolute value of x. So you're going to do y equals. You're going to just go straight to the numbers tab and hit absolute value and just type x. And then hit graph. And that one would be graph C. All right. So now that we have those done, I want you to flip to the next page. And I want you to sort. It's wanting us to sort these graphs um, based on the equation. So if you notice on the equations, we have these ones that have absolute value bars. And then we have these ones that have squares. So I want to grab those to have you look at them real quick. So we have Q, we have E, we have B. Where did my B go? Oh, there it is. So Q, E, B, and J. Notice what all of those make. So this one looks like this. This one looks like this like this and like this. So what we categorize those as are like U-shaped, um, and all of those equations had squares. Okay, look at the other set. So we have this one. We have H that had an absolute value bar. We had N that had an absolute value bar. And we had C that had an absolute value bar. And those make the V-shaped. So the equations, oops, I didn't even write those down. So we had B, let me move it over. B, E, J, and Q. And those all had the U shape, or the upside down U shape. And we call those quadratic. The equations had x squared. We're going to write this in our notebook in just a second. Then we had c, h, and n. And those all made the v shape, or the upside down v. And those had the absolute value. And they had the absolute value bars around the x. Let me get a pen. I'm going to get orange. Sorry, hopefully I'm not hitting the microphone on my computer. So, this one is quadratic functions. And those were the functions where x is squared. So it has x squared somewhere in the problem and make a u shape. So they can, or they can make, so they can have a u shape or they can have an upside down u shape where it looks like that. Notice they always have a maximum or minimum. Always have a maximum or minimum. Okay, so that's quadratic. Now let's do, I need a different color. I'm trying to figure out what color. 
let's do pink. Absolute value. Is where X is inside, oops, inside absolute value bars. That's where X is inside absolute value bars. And so it looks like that. Okay. And they make a V shape. Or an upside down V shape. Okay. And again, they always have a maximum. or minimum. Okay, so, um, so this time we talked about quadratic functions and that's where x is squared, absolute value functions where the x is inside of absolute value. Last time we talked about linear where you just have x times the number and it can be adding, and exponential where the x is the exponent. So those are the four, excuse me, big types of functions that we talk about in um, algebra. Um, and so please make sure that you have all of that written down and you remember it.